Hello everyone, this is Dr. Elias from the Department of Education, Hazara University, Mansehra. Uh, sampling is an important consideration in most empirical research studies. In social sciences, as we know, there are different types of researches, and those researches are generally categorized into quantitative researches, qualitative researches, and researches that mix quantitative and qualitative research designs and are called mixed method researches. Um, like other aspects of research designs, sampling also varies from research design to research design. And in this particular presentation, we will generally discuss sampling uh, the process of sampling and the concept of sampling in qualitative researches. Um, so let's begin this uh, presentation. Sample, generally the main types of samples um, in researches, in social sciences researches, are categorized into probability sample, samples and non-probability samples. Probability samples or in other words, random samples are associated with quantitative researches, um, which are the, the basic aims of these qu most quantitative researches is actually explanation of phenomena or confirmation. So quantitative research studies are basically confirmatory or explanatory um, research studies. And the sample selection is generally ran random samples. Uh, this is mainly because the aim of uh, such research studies actually is statistical generalization. And the samples are actually representative of the population in uh, quantitative statistical terms. On the other hand, in qualitative researches, non-probability samples are generally used. And these type of samples, the non-probability samples, are generally associated with um, qualitative exploratory study designs. And the aim of such uh, studies, qualitative studies, is actually in-depth contextual understanding of phenomena rather than generalization of research results. So non-random selection of samples um, are actually done and generalizations are not statistical. The, the generalizations from research findings of qualitative studies are not statistical generalizations. And generally, um, qualitative researchers do not claim that their samples are Statistical, statistically representative uh, or representative in the sense that quantitative research samples are representative of the broader population of the study. So, um, the, the context, the, the, the concept of sampling in qualitative research is, um, is complex and so the reason is because of the complex natures of, and the different nature of qualitative studies, um, there is a complexity that revolves around the sampling processes in qualitative studies. Um, samples will vary, or the sample type will, types will vary in line with particular research designs um, of qualitative research. There are different there is a variety of research designs in qualitative research, and some of these are uh, research designs uh, that are more focused uh, on particular phenomena, such as case studies, and then there, is, there are other research designs, such as grounded theory research, de um, research designs. And so, with variation in research designs, there will be variation in the sample related to those particular research designs. So the, research, the, the sample of a case study research uh, 
might vary in comparison to phenomenological um, research studies or ethnographic research studies. Um, similarly, the other factors that will impact the selection and choice of, of sample and qualitative research include the nature of data and or the sources of data, such as people um, and objects and phenomena. So if data is being collected from people, um, data could also be in the form of, of events. It could be in the form of pictures, photos, uh, and other such documentary forms of data uh, will might be used in particular uh, qualitative research studies. And so keeping in view the nature of data or the type of data that, that is coming will also impact um, the sample selection and the sample choice in particular um, qualitative research designs. Another very important considerations and very important factor that actually impacts the, the type of sample or the nature of sample or the number of, uh, the number of people or events um, or units in particular sample will also depend on the researcher's access to the, uh, to the sources of data. So in some cases, a particular researcher might want to get data from a number of people, but when, in a practical sense, when access is not, uh, is not available, there will be change in, in, the, in, that, uh, uh, in, the, in that particular sample of that study. And so access, to sources of data will be an Im important factor that will impact the, uh, the, the type of sample and also the number of, uh, uh, the number or quantity of sample as well. Similarly, in many cases, because qualitative researchers um, use a more flexible research design, so there might be change in the focus of the study. Um, as the study progresses, and that will also impact the choice and size and nature of sample in qualitative studies. Again, in more inductive approaches, and, the, and especially in grounded theory approaches to qualitative researches, um, one important consideration is saturation of the data that is coming during the collection, the data collection processes. So the researchers, the, the size of the sample will be decided in line with the kind of data and the amount of data that is coming. So when that saturation point is reached where no further data is, um, is actually needed, needed, that will be the time when um, the researcher will decide that this sample is enough. So as you can see, um, that the inherent flexibility of the qualitative research designs and then the variety of the qualitative research designs, um, there is flexibility and in, in, the, in, in the sample selection of qualitative studies. And so all of these factors is, will actually impact the sample size, the, the nature of sample in qualitative studies. Um, but despite this flexibility, there are certain important um, sample types and important qualitative sample techniques that researchers have been using um, in qualitative researches. And there are quite a few others as well, but, the, but some of the most important ones that are generally used by student um, researchers in their MPhil and PhD studies uh, theses are include purposive or judgmental sample, convenience sample, snowball sample, and theoretical sample. 
Now, um, a, a bit of explanation of these important types of samples that are used in generally in most qualitative researches, um, especially researches in which data is being collected from humans, individuals. Uh, uh, these are important um, sampling types. So purpose of sampling or judgmental sampling is the very name suggests is a sample that the researcher decides on the basis of the purposefulness uh, of his own uh, in line with the purpose of the research. And similarly, the researcher decides, because in qualitative researches, the researchers, the researchers actually have a greater say in making judgments uh, regarding what type of people or what type of cases or what type of phenomena um, are important as data sources. And so here the researchers have to make judgments of what type of people or what type of cases or what type of documents or what type of incident um, are important um, in terms of getting data that will actually respond to their questions or to their research objectives. So purposive or judgmental sample is that sample in qua um, among qualitative sample uh, types that is actually dependent on the judgment of the researcher uh, regarding its usefulness and, and validity uh, in terms of responding to the research question. The second one, the convenience sample, is the, again the, the name suggests is a sample where the basic aim is the convenience of the researcher. So uh, whatever sources of data are available conveniently, where access is convenient for the researcher and the researcher knows um, or he or she actually perceives or thinks that these are the people or these are the events or these are the documents that might have um, answers related to their questions and, and that might have material related to their questions. And besides this, these are the, um, these are the events or the people or the documents that are conveniently available. And so there is ease of access um, and um, I can give um, an example. For example, a researcher is interested in knowing about the importance of the teaching profession from the perspectives of teachers in a particular community. Uh, suppose that particular researcher is a female researcher and, and she is actually based in a society where movement for females is not very convenient. So it will be convenient for her to select um, her sample from females, uh, female teachers in her neighborhood and, uh, or in the schools that are, um, that are actually um, easy to access for her, keeping in view the particular socio-cultural socio barriers that she might face in terms of data collection or in terms of movement moving around. So this will be an example of convenience um, sample. Um, there are, uh, there might be objections to the representativeness of, or the credibility of convenience samples, but that is something that we will come to in some future uh, presentation. Now the next one is the snowball uh, sample. Snowball sample is actually a sample um, which is very useful in cases where the researcher initially doesn't know um, 
um, who adequate number of or clearly um, the kind of people that he or she can get access to and 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 whose views are actually very useful for her or his study so in snowball samples what happens is that the researcher collects uh, collects identifies part a particular person or a source of data and collects data from there and then their particular source of data who uh, that can be some individual or it could be some institution um, and they uh, further identify other people who might be sources of, uh, of relevant data for this particular researcher. So um, one particular participants, a participant identifies another one and then data is collected from that particular uh, participant and he or she identifies another one and this goes on till the researcher decides that the data that he or she has collected is enough and so now we move to the next um, the last one in the in among the types that i have just uh, highlighted here Theoretical sample, as the very name suggests, generally qualitative researchers uh, in, have more inductive approaches. And they are generally not testing theories, they are actually developing theories from empirical data that, that, that they are collecting. So, theoretical saturation or the development of theory is, um, is one of the main aims of many qualitative uh, studies, especially studies in the grounded theory uh, approach. And so theoretical samples uh, are basically samples where the researcher begins with collecting data and keeps on collecting and analyzing data. And so, that, so they don't have a kind of pre-decided pre sample. They keep on collecting data and ultimately they reach a saturation point. Um, this saturation point they can reach uh, within five uh, a participant, and it could be 10 participants, it could be 15 participants. So the researcher uh, keeping in view his, um, his knowledge and his analysis will decide when to stop collecting data. Uh, and uh, so, these are some of the most important um, qualitative uh, sample techniques. Of course, there are other sample techniques as well that have been identified um, and, uh, by other researchers. But we are not including a whole list of those. Uh, you might, you people might have um, questions regarding other possible types of qualitative uh, research um, qualitative data collection techniques and qualitative data samples so if you have those questions uh, please feel free to ask those questions in the comment section thank you very much for your time take care bye